had just started the clinic day in uh, Church of Jerusalem, which is in a, a very rundown, extremely urban, poor part of Lakai. We were just getting going. The, we had a doctor and two nurses. They were all seeing people. It was quite crowded, and there was like a little hubbub going on at the entrance, and somebody kind of running in, and other people kind of telling them, you know, you have to wait in line. And a woman, an older woman, looked like maybe a grandmother figure, was carrying an infant wrapped in a blanket and um, crying. And it sounded like, through what the translators were saying, she was worried that her baby was dying. We went out there to the door, and uh, a mom had this limp infant. And he was gone. I mean, I we, you know, listened, and I mean, he was gone. If that had been here and we were waiting in a doctor's office and a mother brought in a child who had just passed away, there would be tears and outrage and, you know, a, a lot of reaction. And it was just so telling to me that this is life in Haiti. It's that hard. It, it was horribly difficult. Um, and then when it became apparent that there was nothing we could do, that this baby was gone, the mom just huddled her in and ran out the door. We never saw her again. And then we go back to work. If you needed something to crystallize when you asked the question, what's the health care like? I mean, that's it. That the death of an infant at home without ever seeing anyone in, in any sort of medical care is just part of their everyday. Healthcare is very poor. Um, things that are so automatic for us to get in the United States are just not available here. So people really suffer. In addition, they can't afford health care. So even if they could go for a simple procedure, they don't have the money to do it. Because healthcare is so inaccessible to most people, I think that they have grown to be a custom of just whatever happens, you kind of just roll with it. I mean, of course, some people can get to a hospital because there are a few hospitals in Haiti, you know, but as we found out in our most recent trip, those hospitals run out of staff, those hospitals run out of supplies, and yeah, a hospital can just close up shop because there's no resources. On the island of Ilavash, there's one medical clinic, but there isn't even one doctor that staffs that. There is a part-time doctor who comes and goes, and sometimes he's there and sometimes he's not. And actually, when the need is greatest, like after a hurricane, he's typically not there because then he's home taking care of his family outside the country, or he left because it was maybe going to be unsafe. So health care is really non-existent on the island. We try to bring mission teams in that can provide some simple health care for things like fevers and colds and cuts and bruises and things like that. But when it comes to a more complex case, they bring to our attention people that aren't getting care that really, really need care, and we try to get the help for those particular people then. I think mission teams are especially important when it comes to medical care. It reaches the people in a much more impactful way than just sending an envelope full of cash. Um, there's people to not only treat and bandage and dispense medications, but someone to look in someone's eyes and say, you know, how are you feeling today and what is your problem and how can I help you? No one's getting that kind of attention because it's just not there. The people we see in the medical clinics are desperate to have their kids seen because this is in all likelihood for many of them the first and only time they've ever been seen by a medical professional. So just to even have somebody look at them and say, your child seems healthy, that's not anything they've ever been able to have verified before. Because if you can barely get to a doctor with a broken bone, you're certainly not getting to a doctor for anything routine.
that's why the goal is to, to try to have a standing medical center that we can stock on some kind of con continual basis and have staffing there even if physicians from the, the states maybe only get there you know intermittently a few times a year or, or you know once a month or something but you can still have local staffing we can have a nurse or somebody who's a, a presence in that clinic and can help what you need an established facility you need some established personnel if you really want to have an impact on the situation that exists in Ila Vash, then you have to do something that's not temporary. It has to be something that can be done that's a generational change. The clinic is pretty much designed where all of the functions are on the first floor, and then the second floor will be the living spaces and the rooms for the doctors to be staying there when they come down for their mission. The site itself is uh, not only beautiful, it's also a spot that I think is going to uh, result in a successful uh, usage. And there are clinics down there in other locations that we saw that really are not getting used. So here we're also not only providing a space for the Haitian doctor that's there, you know, 24-7, we're creating a living space for them and a nice one so that we can get a doctor from the mainland that says, you know what, I, I, I don't mind going to Ilavash for six months. And then when the American teams come down, I can learn from them, and they're right next to each other upstairs in rooms. So the design um, is very customized for the specific condition and the needs to get medical care from both the states and from locals to the people. There needs to be a clinic, there needs to be a building that needs to be staffed on a permanent basis so that there actually is medical care on the island. Oh,